Go fiddling with any locks around here. We're going to have a real problem. Hey, watch it! Hide and fur armor can help camouflage you in the forest. But a true warrior takes his foe head on. Oh, hello there. What can I do for you? Blades, gauntlets, I can forge anything you need. I'm Lord's Apprentice, although I've been his for less than a season. Before that, I was with Adriana Benici in Whiterun, and before that, Berend in Solitude. I'm on a sort of pilgrimage. When I'm finished, my family expects me to return to Cyrodiil and take over the forge. My name's Isabel, by the way. Pleased to meet you. Not just any family. Ever heard of the Starblood Forge? My family has been the caretaker of it for centuries. It was made not long after the Oblivion Crisis, and next to the old memorial and the hero statue, it's one of the most iconic landmarks in Kvatch. They say it was built atop a well of dangerous blood, and it's in that well that the weapons are cooled. Some even say that the forge itself is haunted, specifically with the soul of one of my ancestors. Legend has it that when the Daedra invaded, she refused to leave her shop, smithing weapons for the townsfolk until the last man had fallen. That's why only those who share her blood can use the forge, and tradition that the firstborn daughter would be the one to inherit it. That would be me. It's an honor, I suppose. The responsibility of the forge would likely go to the next daughter in line, my sister Felicia. A fine choice. She has always been the more creative smith. Diamond encrusted pommels, hilts that shimmered like drake scales. Everything she made was beautiful. And it wouldn't matter that the blades couldn't cut warm butter. Nobody would ever use them for battle. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have used the word haunted. It's not like that at all. She's more of a guardian spirit. When it comes time for me to inherit the forge, there's a ritual. A test, actually. I know, I know. Some people think it's the pressure, or the burden of carrying on the family name. But the truth is, it's the clients. It's not like the Skyforge here. If I took over the family business, I would be crafting swords for nobles. They would be decorative art pieces, locked away in display cases, or mounted over their beds. I would be an artist more than a blacksmith. There'd be no blood on my blades, no chinks in my armor. That's not what I want. I want to craft weapons for heroes. I want to forge weapons that will slay tyrants and craft armor that repels dragon fire. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I've met some pretty smart mud crabs, but none were as sharp as you. The response she has always been the more, and it wouldn't matter that the blades couldn't cut warm but Like my mother before me, and my grandmother before her, I must craft an object that best represents my ideals and spirit. If the object is deemed worthy, it will earn its place in the Underforge, alongside the blades, shields and hammers of my ancestors. That's sort of what this pilgrimage is about. I'm here not just to learn from the masters, but to learn about myself. At least, that's what I told my mother. The truth is, I chose Skyrim because of the war, and the chance to forge for true warriors. You know your history. Fact is, they took a lot of cities, a batch included. But my mother says they never would have held it. They hear her tell it, we would have taken Kvatch back if not for the Concordant, and her blades would have killed a whole lot of Talmor. Still, the treaty did give us our home back, and if there's one thing the people of Kvatch know, it's how to rebuild. All right. It's all right, although we've gotten a lot less visitors after the dragon attack killed him. That's what I enjoyed most, meeting all the travellers across the border from Cyrodiil and sharing stories of home. But now you're here, 
You know, I can tell just by looking at your hands that you've got stories to tell. You don't say. And by the looks of it, you managed to keep your wits about you. Impressive. I probably would have been staring at it. No, not just staring. I'd be completely awestruck. I mean, a dragon. A fairy tale come to life. That's what I'd be thinking right before I turned me to roast. Which is why you're an adventurer and I'm a blacksmith. It depends. I've been taught that emotions are a powerful part of smithing. When I craft a shield, I think of the soldier's child praying for a safe return. For a sword, I envision a man getting revenge for a brother's death. When I imagine a soldier marching after battle, or a hero vanquishing a great evil, that's when my hammer feels most inspired. Just to know that I was a part of that, that it was my scale, it just takes your breath away thinking about it. How can I help you? Of course! I wouldn't be a very good blacksmith if I turned down requests, especially from a true hero. Just tell me what kind of metal and I'll take care of it. You mean LSF? I'm not keen on making weapons for figureheads. I'd much rather make a weapon for General Tullius. Although there's been talk of another, a child descended from Iskramor himself, I wonder how you could even prove that. Now that's a strange request. Not in and of itself, but you're the third person to ask me that this week. I'll tell you what I told the others. The forge in Kvach is special, and it isn't just for blood. Two lords could have easily been brothers. Come separately, though, so they couldn't have known each other. One of them dropped her name a couple of times to point out the urgency of his quest. Maybe he was trying to impress me as well. So is it true, then? This whole thing about a descendant of Iskramor? I'm a bit conflicted. I'd never forge arms against the Empire, but the chance to forge a weapon to slay a legendary beast? Aye, that's a job for me. True, the Nord said as much. No true-blooded Nord would challenge the kin of Iskramor. To explain that, I need to explain a bit about smithing. See, when you quench a blade, you can't just use water or brine. You need to add a bit of oil to keep the thin sections from cracking, because otherwise the steam will get between the water and the blade. That makes for an uneven quench. Of course, if your well is big enough, it'll make sure the liquid stays in contact regardless. But I'm guessing we'll only have so much blood to work with. In that case, we need to brew a special oil one that doesn't contaminate the liquid. Aye, I'm considering it. It's always been my dream to forge great weapons like this. I've actually got everything I need, with the exception of one thing. I need a bit of blood grass shipped from home. That's where the oil comes from. The problem is, the East Empire Company's been through a bit of a rough patch lately, and it's hard to get rare goods. Maybe you could talk to my contact Cyrus over in Windhelm and see if you can't get it shipped sooner. Until next time.
can't thank you enough for what you did. Yes, yes. What do you want? Oh. I take it you're one of Isabel's friends. Look, I already placed the order, and the shipment would have arrived already if not for those bandits. So I did exactly what it says in the company manual. Section 1A of Chapter 12, page 143. When you have a pirate problem, hire an adventurer. I don't know. He was a Nord man by the name of Larsden. He was traveling with an Imperial, either a bodyguard or another friend of Isabel's. Yes, yes. What do you want? Oh. So I did exactly what it said. Well, of course not. I'm still developing it. It's an idea that came to me while watching some of my fellow employees bumble about whenever there was an emergency. I thought, what if we had a guide that prevented these fools from having to think? It would account for every scenario and plan every contingency. Most things you can anticipate. As for the rest, well, the amount of damage caused will pale in comparison to the amount prevented. Not to mention those scenarios will be added to the manual for the next employee. Yes, yes. Oh. So I did exactly what it said. I have a preference for things going right. When people fail to follow procedure, shipments get delayed. When shipments get delayed, it alters our schedule. When our schedule is constantly changing, it cripples our ability to plan ahead. People will call it bureaucracy, but there's a reason why we are the most reliable shipping company in all of Tamriel. Correlation does not equal causation. If bandits attacked every time I shaved, it doesn't mean growing a beard will stop the next one. Yes, yes. What do you want? Oh, so I did exactly what it said. Of course. Even if he's dead, it's likely he took a few of those pirates with him. So you see, suddenly the cost of... Come
Yes, yes. Oh, so I did exactly what it says in the co Of course. So you see, suddenly the cost of stealing our cargo has gone up. It's more trouble than it's worth. Which means they're going to fence it soon. We just have to find this person and eliminate him. Simple. I believe this fence has a system for when he meets these pirates. You see, I have a source in the black market. He also happens to be a dark elf, and every week he goes to pray over by refugees' rest. Now one day, he says he came across a curious thing. One of the cairns had an iron dagger stuck in the snow beside it. Even more curious is the fact that the very next day, the black market was bustling with fresh cargo. No, we don't want to spook him, and I think the dagger is a mutual sign, meaning either the fence or the pirate can place it. That means they'll both be meeting somewhere once you put it there. You will have to play it by ear. If the meet is somewhere private, feel free to kill them so long as you find out the drop location. If it's somewhere public, then your only job is to find out where the cargo is and retrieve it. That's your priority. Good. Here's the dagger. If you'll notice, the hilt is chipped. That's how you will know it's the one you left at the cairn, in case you lose track of him in a crowd. But please, try not to be seen. can't thank you enough for what you did.
Hold on. You're not following me, are you? You again? Who do you work for? Well, whoever it is, you won't take me alive. Off killed, justice was done. That might sound harsh, but it's how I feel. Nord. Good to see you again, friend. This was able to find someone competent to help out. What do you need? Nord. Knives and other goods for the home, all in. You're someone who can get things done. I like that. You need anything, come see me. I'm as resourceful as I am discreet. We're one of the same kind. When Ulfric was... Justice was done. That might sound harsh, but it's how What do you I need? Feel. Yes? The great How splendid. Here, take a look at this. Kind. Some of the Jarl's men came wrong. by and left this bounty letter. Come slumming to the great huh? quarter, have you?
Glad you Ortis was drink, able to find someone right competent to help out. At long last, Windhelm is free. No longer must we suffer persecution at the hands of Ulfric Stormcloak. I you, my friend, need to practice faith. How can I help you? How splendid. Another Nord. Come. At long last, Windhelm is free. No longer must we suffer persecution at the hands of Ulfric Stormcloak. If you need another drink, I'll be right here. We're one of the same kind, right here. you and I. I'm glad to have met you. Don't even think about it. Good. Come slumming to the Grey Quarter, have you? Long last wind. It's not the cold of Skyrim that gets to me. It's the sting from the people. If you need another drink, I'll be right here.
Good to see you. Finally, someone useful is around. Watch what you're doing! Thank you enough for what you did. You did? I mean, of course you did. It all went according to the manual, Section 1B of Chapter 12, on how to deal with pirates. I trust you have everything you need, then. The grass should be well dried, just as Isabel asked. Apparently that's how you fit more into an Alembic. I suppose I should also offer you a reward for helping this transaction move along. My manual? I'm afraid that's only for employees of the East Empire Trading Company. Although I do have this page of notes on mercenary work. Maybe you might find it useful. Here, and thanks. There's been some attacks late at night, mostly on the livestock around town. I better forge some better blades for the guards, just in case. Being a true hero, I take it you would have run all the way to Kavach if you had to. Hopefully it was a little easier than that. I guess all that's left now is to forge the axe. Have you gotten word from your friends?
All right, you can tell them I'll do it. I'll forge the axe. And when it's done, no beast, dragon or otherwise will be a match for its edge. Only a hearty soul travels the road these days. Good to see Skyrim still has such fine people. You give an old man hope.